The stay-at-home message has been issued to people across Europe and much of the world. But what about those without a fixed address? In the UK, the government has said everyone sleeping rough will be found accommodation. But some charities say too many people are still on the streets. So what can be done to help those people in the middle of this public health crisis? Let's talk to Michelle Ferraris, who is from the Italian Federation of Organisations for Homeless People, and John Glackin, who is founder of the British homelessness charity, Streets Kitchen. Good morning, both of you. Thank you very much for, for talking to us. Um, Michelle, what is the scale of the homelessness problem across Italy in normal times? Uh, good morning. Uh, in normal time, uh, in Italy, we have around uh, 55,000 homeless people, not all of them in the street, uh, but uh, all of them without a home. Uh, and so this is the normal scale uh, before the coronavirus. Uh, presently, the situation is not so clear. Uh, definitely, we have no more. We have not more uh, places or in dormitory or shelter because uh, few of them closed. Uh, most of them opened, uh, extended their opening time from the normal 12, uh, 10 hour to 24 hour. But uh, no one, no. No city has uh, decided to open new dormitory because uh, it, it was difficult. And this was uh, the appeal and the alarm that we, we launched uh, last week and a few weeks ago. So what is the situation now? I mean, do you have any idea how many people are still sleeping outdoors during this crisis? Probably the same number that it was before. Really? Maybe more. Yeah, because uh, just a few cities uh, organized uh, a new kind of shelter, exceptional and uh, extraordinary shelter for maybe a few hundred people. But uh, uh, there are other shelters or dormitory that probably closed uh, and uh, or people that uh, refused to stay in the dormitory where they are. Because uh, if you have a dormitory with uh, 40, 60 people, where one or two of them are positive to COVID-19, uh, they are asked and they are uh, sent to the hospital, but all the other people that are inside, they should be stay, they should stay in quarantine. But uh, if the quarantine is not organized and managed, maybe they want to go out and, they, and uh, there's not a system to avoid this, so they are maybe when they went around and they are in the street. So it's not sure how, how much or how many people are actually on the street. Understood. Um, and whether they are positive or uh, they should stay in quarantine. Yeah. John, hello. Um, Hi. The British government promised to make sure everybody would be offered accommodation. Has that happened? Um, no, it hasn't happened. I mean, they made a big statement a few weeks ago that uh, over a weekend they were going to get everybody in. Now, we knew at the time that that wouldn't be the case, and it still isn't the case. And it's a credit to a lot of the councils and outreach workers. They really are trying very, very hard to get people in. But the beds aren't there. There's communication problems. I mean, also finding a lot of our homeless people is very tricky. I mean, to try and do this immediately. So, I mean, there's far too many people still out in the streets, rough sleeping. And the problem is, there is this feeling that all homeless people are indoors now, everything's safe, it's not. I mean, we're getting reports of people getting abused on the streets because people are saying, why are you on the streets? Mm. You know, there should be no homeless people. So, I mean, there but is... So, if there aren't enough beds, people. John, let's think this through. I, I, I know some hotels potentially have offered to uh, put a roof over the head of some homeless people. Where do you think these beds should be coming from, then? Well... It's quite apparent that I mean, there's thousands and thousands of empty hotel rooms sitting in London at the moment that we could use immediately to put people into a very adequate temporary accommodation. I mean, that is sitting there. I mean, it's a travesty the amount of empty buildings that the normal circumstances are around. I mean, there is plenty of plenty of places around. I mean, there's whole blocks of flats lying empty in Manchester and London, all over the place. I mean, there are empty buildings there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so just but, let me ask you, on the hotels... Uh, um, idea, would you expect the hotels to offer their rooms for free? Um, well, I'm presuming they're going to need some sort of uh, security or some sort of uh, 
costs. I mean, I don't think any of the hotels are actually giving them for free. They're actually charging for the rooms. Mm. So, I mean, in this economic crisis that we're in, I mean, it offers an opportunity for hotels to actually maybe keep their industry going slightly, you know, re-employ the cooks, re-employ the people back in there and, you know, keep people working. I've got a statement from the government here. They say over 90% of rough sleepers known to local authorities at the beginning of this crisis have now been made offers of safe accommodation, ensuring some of the most vulnerable in society are protected from the pandemic. This is the result of a collaborative effort across government and with local councils, health providers and charities, backed by £1.6 billion of government funding to help councils respond to the virus, including support for the most vulnerable. Um, Michelle, can I go back to you? Is it true that Italian police have handed out fines to some homeless people on the streets during this crisis? Yes, uh, unfortunately it happened at the beginning. Uh, presently, probably it, it has reduced. Uh, um, it happened because uh, the, the government has said uh, stay home. So everybody should stay home, but people, homeless people, has not have not home. Uh, so they were uh, fined into the street, and so we launched an appeal with a street lawyer, our associate, and uh, we wrote to the minister to ask them not not to do some special law, but just to ask the the police and the people that are has the, the order to, to take to, to look at the street to uh, verify the status of the people and if someone is uh, um, asked why they are on the street and they, the answer is, is big, I'm in the street because I have not a home just verify with the social services and if it is true bring them to some safe place and uh, take care of them but not finding them is unuseful and is a waste of time okay John, I want to ask you, do you have any concerns that the environment, the economic impact, I beg your pardon, of the lockdown in Britain might mean there are more homeless people in the long term? Absolutely. I mean, that, that, that is the biggest problem I'm hearing from outreach is this influx of new people coming to the streets. I mean, you've got... In London, I mean, you've lots of those uh, tourist uh, backpackers, hostels of all clothes. You've got landlords who are kicking people out totally illegally. I mean, there's oh, well, a lot are, of people... Are you sure that's happening, John? Because, the, the as you know, the government uh, has, has put in place restrictions banning landlords from evicting people for three months. I mean, that's correct. I mean... Just to bring you back to what you said earlier about, I mean, I think it's a bit of an insult for the government say that 90% of the people have been offered positions. I mean, I could offer you a steak dinner tonight, but it doesn't mean you're going to get one. Yeah. I mean, what we would need to hear about is the actual amount of beds that are, are there and how do we steer people into them? This is a big problem that the grassroots groups are facing. We know there are beds there, but the communication problem of us trying to get people into beds is not there and that needs to be improved. Okay. We are seeing lots of new to the streets i mean there are illegal evictions occurring definitely yes and so where are those people being where are those people going when they're evicted one doesn't know they're going to the streets i mean this is the problem at the moment all the services are closed day centers are closed advisory services are closed you mm. go through the phones it's very hard to get advice and it's very hard to find out what is happening in the world i mean it's great to hear from our, our italian friend uh, what's going on because i wasn't very aware of what is happening in italy on the streets and people aren't very aware of what's happening in the uk on the streets because this is not being reported well we're reporting it now so thank you very much for coming on air thank you uh, John Glackin, founder of the UK homelessness charity Streets Kitchen. Thank you for your time. And Michelle Ferraris, a spokesperson for the Italian Federation of Organisations for Thank Homeless you. People. Many thanks.